Okay, welcome, and thank you for attending our webinar today titled Getting an Edge in Automation. My name is Benson Hoagland, and I'm responsible for product strategy and marketing here at Opto22. I got to tell you, we had an amazing turnout uh, for this webinar today. Over 500 of you have registered to attend, and uh, a fair share of you are already online. So thank you for taking time out of your day uh, to be with us. I'm absolutely thrilled and, frankly, quite excited uh, to present to you today. So let, let us get this ball on the road. Okay, so here's an agenda of what we'll be covering in uh, today's webinar. I've got a lot to cover. So uh, I'll start with a few introductions and how to participate in today's event, uh, followed by a short intro introduction about who Opto22 is. And then I'll address the topic at hand. How do you get an edge in your automation and IIoT projects? But the fun part will, of course, be the live demos. So taking place right here in our uh, Opto Demo Studio from uh, Opto Headquarters. So I've also got some exclusive product uh, development news that uh, if you can hang around all the way to the end, I'm happy to share that, uh, that with you as well. Okay, so uh, onward and upward. We're going to cover a lot of ground. It's going to feel like coming out of a, a fire hose for the next hour, hour 15, or whatever it ends up being. A uh, quick introduction. We are a California-based, privately held manufacturer of industrial automation hardware and the software that runs on that. We have over four decades of, uh, of experience with an installed base in the millions and thousands of customers all over the world. We're known for highly reliable, mission-critical, made-in-the-USA products backed by lifetime warranties. But really what makes us different in the marketplace is that uh, we've had this, this engineering philosophy that's driven us for decades uh, by, of this notion of combining like rugged, reliable OT systems with open IT technologies, giving you a level of versatility and capabilities in these systems that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, and uh, giving you an opportunity to address projects you, you could only dream of. Uh, and we're also a pioneer of many innovations that are being used in the industrial space today. For example, back in 1996, we collaborated with four other companies and Microsoft to create the OPC Foundation. In fact, the first draft of the OPC spec was completed in this building just down the hall. Uh, and uh, at about the same time, we developed something called Ethernet I.O., also in the 90s, and frankly, everybody told us we were out of our minds. Nobody was ever going to run Ethernet on the plant floor. Well, we know how that turned out. <laughs> so uh, today our focus will be, of course, on the latest first uh, in the industry, and of course I'm talking about the Edge Programmable Industrial Controller. Now, as I said, our products are made in the USA, right here in Temecula, California. So there's a drone shot of our factory. We're about an hour north of San Diego. It's where we design, build, and support everything we make. This is also where I'm broadcasting live today from our Opto Demo Studio. Uh, there, uh, there's the studio there, nice little aerial shot. Uh, kind of call it my COVID project. <laughs> and as I said, we've, th we've uh, served thousands of customers over our 47 years of business, both large and small, maybe even some companies you're familiar with there from all over the globe in all kinds of different industries. And a subset of those customers noted on the screen now have implemented the products that are featured in this webinar, both Groove Rio and the Groove Epic. Now we serve a broad range of industries from manufacturing to pharmaceutical, buildings, telecom, utilities like water, waste, water. All of these plus we do a lot of business with OEMs, those companies who've chosen to take our technology and embed it into their own products. So our products address a number of different application types from traditional automation control, SCADA, building management. But one of the focuses that we have a lot going on now is this notion of digital transformation or IIoT or Industry 4.0, call it what you like. Uh, but it's essentially this notion of moving data around. And that data comes in the form of a wide variety of signal types that are supported by these systems. Uh, whether it's uh, you know, virtually any sensor, any circuit, any environment uh, or device, uh, it can be connected to our systems and move that data where it needs to be. 
All right, our flagship product line that we'll talk about today is named Groove. And a part of the Groove family is the Groove Epic and the Groove Rio. First is Groove Epic. It's an edge, a real-time edge programmable industrial controller. And Groove Rio is what we call IO for the IAOT. It's that and so much more. Um, in short, Groove Epic is a hardware and software platform that combines into a single industrial backplane a real-time control engine, an operator interface, a rich suite of software tools, plus a fully secure gateway with uh, uh, account, uh, account management, firewall, VPN, and so on. And it's all built on a, on a world-class I.O. system with legendary Opto22 I.O. quality. So, for applications that may not need I.O., we also offer the Epic in a so-called processor-only chassis, uh, so you can still get all the benefits of this powerful system in one compact industrial package that could potentially replace uh, PCs that you might be using today on your plant floor. All right, Groove Rio is a compact standalone Ethernet I.O. module that's nearly infinitely configurable for just about any I.O. signal you can imagine. Over 200,000 unique I.O. combinations are available and possible from this single product. It's web-based, it's got power over Ethernet, much more, uh, more coming up in a moment. Now, when you are uh, delivering powerful, versatile, literally cutting-edge uh, technologies to customers, uh, as we are, uh, we anticipate our customers, of course, will have lots of questions and probably need some help along the way. So, we have tons of help and resources to help you get started and to get assistance when you need it most. Options include a live chat on our website that is monitored by engineers like, like Ben and Garrick and Dan uh, and others, Salam and Panta. We've got all these engineers ready to help you. You could also use just traditional uh, methods, use a contact us form on our website, uh, you know, perhaps drop us an email or even give us a call. Yeah, we still answer the phone here. So, but one of our best resources is our comprehensive OptoU training. This is available 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, online. Dozens and dozens of courses are available here with videos and quizzes and, and completion banners and so on, so much more. Best of all, everything on this slide is free. All the support is, is included, all the training is included. You don't have to reach in your pocket to uh, get any of that stuff. So uh, if you uh, like an integration partner to get your project going, you can choose from a long list of certified opto partners that are available on our website. Search by location, search by industry, and some of our opto partners have actually recorded welcome videos so you can get to know them better. Check those videos out on our website. And if you're a system integrator and interested in becoming part of the Opto Partner program, drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. So, here we go. No discussion about new technologies or new product offerings or anything is truly warranted without first identifying the problem you're trying to solve. And in this case, understanding that problem was the genesis for the development of Groove Epic and for Groove Rio. So let's take a look. As folks set out to you know, address their automation applications and digital transformation and so on, uh, or maybe they just want to move some data around, you know, they typically end up with this really mixed bag of various technologies kind of cobbled and stitched together to achieve a desired result. And you end up with you know, multiple vendors to deal with, software licensing, Windows updates, one of our favorites, right? <laughs> yeah, IT integration, cloud connectivity, all of these things and much more with this essentially a hodgepodge of components. And the problem is these systems end up being very, very brittle. They're, they're complex, they're uh, expensive, uh, they're e extremely difficult to maintain over the long term, and they definitely don't scale. But what's worse is often, and this is often overlooked, this approach has all kinds of cybersecurity issues. There are just too many so, uh, security vulnerabilities and attack vectors with this, uh, with this approach. So how do we solve these problems? Well, I say we start at the edge. So you may ask yourself, what is the edge? The edge is compute power at the very end of, uh, at the edge. And let's, let's try this. Let's use an analogy here. We all have one of these in one of our pockets, right? It's a smartphone, of course. It's arguably one of the most powerful, 
most and smallest and most used uh, mobile computing or computing technology uh, available in the world today. So think about all the devices and, and technologies that have been largely obsoleted by the smartphone. Your, uh, your address book, your alarm clock, your flashlight, and who carries a camera around anymore, and reading your email and so on. Even your old phone has been replaced by this new edge compute technology. And for tasks like email, shopping, uh, reading and learning, or watching a video, or updating your social status, you do that now on your mobile device, largely replacing your PC. So you can see where this uh, edge technology can take us. And the way that it does that is through software. Uh, think about all the apps that are available on your smartphone to do various tasks. You pick the app or software based on the task you want to perform, maybe based on your familiarity with the app, or the suitability for the app to do the task you need. So, how does this smartphone analogy kind of apply to solving the industry problem I described a moment ago? Well, we suggest using edge computing and the notion of the smartphone mobile computing to reduce, eliminate, uh, reduce and eliminate the uh, extraneous pieces and parts and components and so on, while at the same time adding security and building systems that are maintainable over the long term. Like your smartphone, simplify your life, right? Now, of course, I'm not going to get away with suggesting you rip and replace the technologies you're using in the problem box above with the shiny new object uh, edge computing device uh, in the solution box at the bottom. So, again, the, applica the application of edge technologies means you can preserve your existing legacy PLCs, your devices, and much more by choosing the right software on the edge computing device to integrate that data right at the edge. All right, that's a good start. And all this technology, though, won't get a second, glass, uh, second glance if it can't perform better, if it doesn't provide a much more superior solution to what you're using today and give you the security you need. So, for example, let's take a look at the the old way, the way that things are done today. We've got a lot of devices there in the field that are connected to applications, uh, on-premise, corporate uh, applications, perhaps even cloud. But the problem is that these applications create these one-to-one, point-to-point -to -point connections to the, the data producers. And as you add applications or you add users, this thing just really starts to expand exponentially. And what's worse is these connections are completely insecure. Uh, there's dozens of network open ports all over the place. It's a total nightmare for IT or, or your sysadmin, and certainly uh, as well for, uh, you know, like your SCADA admin. So, a new approach decouples the data producing devices, the data devices at the bottom, from the applications that need the data noted here on the top. And instead, what we do is we build a model that's high performance, efficient, bi-directional, and it's a published subscribe model that is literally orders of magnitude more efficient than traditional pull response methods. But one of the major benefits of this approach is cybersecurity. Here's why. With a broker placed in, say, inside your company's DMZ or on a, cloud, uh, on a cloud system, and your IT department knows all about that, uh, you need only one network port open in the entire system and have only one place to manage access, uh, users, passwords, and even the secure port. So IT, believe me, IT loves that. It's much, much easier to maintain this type of a system. And speaking of managing and maintaining the system, uh, it, it also helps define what's called a unified namespace. Because what we're doing is we're collecting a lot of data right at the edge, and we're giving it a namespace or a tag definition. So when the tags get up to the broker and applications subscribe to those tags, they've got all the information they need, and you've hereby created essentially the single source of truth. Now, there's a lot more to this, obviously, that's outside the scope of this webinar. So we've got a white paper and a technical note on using industrial MQTT. Uh, check that out. 
But we've also have a number of uh, independent content developers out on the internet that have also done some pretty cool videos uh, and tutorials on getting started with this. And I'd like to give a shout out to, to a couple of them. N number one is uh, Vladimir with Solus PLC. Great tutorials on MQTT. Uh, same with Kudzai at uh, industry40.tv. Great website again. And Dave Schultz at G5 Consulting. Each of these guys have made independent reviews and tutorials about uh, exactly this technology. And then further to that, uh, bringing up the obligatory logo slide, here we are again. Uh, these customers have actually implemented the technologies I just described and are reaping the benefits of moving their operational data wherever it needs to be. All right, I'll be showing this architecture in play for the uh, demo coming up uh, where all the everything I just described will actually be demoing with you so you can see how it, uh, how it actually works. Okay, quickly, uh, uh, very quick, I've kind of set the table so far in terms of what problems that we ha are trying to solve out there uh, and, and perhaps a couple approaches on how we might solve those. So now let's dive into the, uh, to the products. This is Groove Epic. It is an acronym for Edge Programmable Industrial Controller. Okay. And from a hardware pa perspective, we are packing quite a punch here uh, from custom designed uh, removable spring clamp field terminations to hot swappable I.O. of various types, even some really useful uh, on device visual diagnostics to give you a sense of what's going on with the system. Um, we have different chassis sizes available, so you fit in the, you buy the chassis size you need for your application, and then we tie all that back into this industrial quad-core CPU with plenty of RAM available for all your applications, and of course a power, uh, power fail-safe solid-state drive with oodles of you know, gigabytes of storage capabilities for a do local data storage, application use, and so on. But there's also plenty of network and peripheral so support built in uh, with Ethernet and uh, USB and more. And, and it's important, this, this dual gigabit Ethernet it will become very important in a moment in the demos because this lays the foundation for cr creating this secure edge computing platform for all your existing unsecure devices. We can put those uh, on, on the backside of essentially of the Epic and secure those systems. Now, one of the other unique characteristics of the Epic uh, is indeed it's, uh, it has its own onboard smartphone sized uh, screen right on the front, but we've also added an HDMI port to this. So you can use your off the shelf industrial or otherwise HDMI touchscreen monitor, connect it to it, uh, thereby eliminating the, you know, having to purchase a hardened OIT or even using a panel PC or something like that, save you a lot of money. And then plus there's a secure web-based mobile ready HMI server directly in the device. Uh, it's built in to allow access to screens locally or anywhere on the network. More on that coming up in the demo. But like your smartphone, the magic is in the software. And on Epic, there's pr plenty of these pre-installed apps to help you address just about any project you can think of. Uh, and uh, you might just choose you know, one or two of these, maybe the CodeSys runtime or Pack Control along with the HMI software, and then that's it. Or you want to delve into some of the other applications on here, like Node-RED for building IIoT applications or Ignition Edge uh, for communicating to PLCs like those from Allen Bradley, Siemens, or Flow Computers, and all the drivers that are available uh, for Ignition. We also have shell access. So you want to write your own application in Python or C or whatever? All of this software? It's included. It's uh, included with the device. The uh, notable exception is the Ignition Edge software, and that's only licensed based on what features or what modules you actually use. So uh, it's nice to have everything just included for you. So here's the architecture, the system architecture. I got my uh, laser pointer out here. I've got my analog digital serial I.O. connected up to my I.O. cards of various types. Over one of those segmented Ethernet ports will be the unsecured devices, you know, the OT network, if you will, uh, and then we'll bring all that data up into the software that's residing on the Epic, running on the edge, uh, and then, you know, manipulate it or do whatever, you know, do perform control, uh, and then send the data wherever it needs to be, on-premise applications, in the cloud, and even to devices. So really got you covered there. Now, I know we have a lot of folks on the call today that are existing Opto22 customers and have been using our Snap.io line for the last uh, 25 some odd years. 
Uh, and so you may be curious, what's the future? A couple quick points. Number one, Snap.io is fully compatible with the Groove Epic system and Groove Rio. So you can actually utilize your, your legacy hardware with, uh, with Groove Rio. Uh, and Groove Epic. And two, we've got no plans to discontinue the Snap line of products. As long as we can continue to make components for this thing uh, or get the parts, we'll make the product. Uh, and in, indeed, we have a, a new case study we're just about to post up to our blog. Please subscribe. Um, and this is about Emerald 66, where they actually are. It's a brand new application. They're using Epic and, and Rio and, uh, and Snap all together to solve uh, customer problems. Okay, quickly about Groove Rio. Uh, this state-of-the-art uh, I.O. module is, is unbelievable. This is a uh, intelligent Ethernet-based I.O. module offering uh, unprecedented signal options, power over Ethernet or line power, web-based configuration, PoE, Node-RED, MQTT, it's got it all. Uh, but what's more, it actually has seamless integration with Inductive Automation's Ignition platform, and it's kind of earned itself the nickname uh, Ignition IO. So a little bit about that, that true differentiator with this product is its software configurability. You've got eight channels of mixed multifunction IO signals, discrete ins or outs, voltage current in and out, resistance, temperature of three kinds, electromechanical relays, two of those at five amps. So a lot of your needs can be covered very quickly and easily with a single part number. And here's a diagram that kind of illustrates how those sensors and signals get landed on the removable terminal for the Rio. Um, uh, this is in our, this uh, information, this uh, illustration is on our website and our data sheets. But we also uh, have a really cool uh, online demo on our website called the Rio Explorer, where you can pick and choose and see how things get landed, uh, wiring diagrams, a whole nine yards. So check that out, Rio Explorer. Quick overview of the Rio's uh, system architecture, very similar to uh, Epic. We're going to pull in the analog and digital I.O. We're going to connect that up to the terminals. Uh, we'll use the Ethernet port. It does have two Ethernet ports, but this is a switched interface, not segmented like Epic. More on that later. Uh, so we, but we can connect to Ethernet devices or even USB serial uh, right from the Rio. And again, move the data where it needs to be. All right. We get this question a lot, and understandably so. Uh, what's the difference between Epic and Rio? In short, Epic is a real-time controller. First and foremost, with its I.O. backplane, uh, real-time control engines, uh, and all the other things that are noted here. Whereas Rio is more of a, uh, an I.O. system that does actually have some non-real-time I, uh, logic that you can do with Node Red. I'll show you that uh, coming up in the demo. But it also they both offer secure, you know, account-based configuration, very secure systems uh, that go on your network. So more on these differences in the demo. And hey, great timing! It is now time for the demo. And uh, okay, here's how we're going to do things. Uh, I'm going to break this demo down into two parts. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, present. Uh, all everything I just described by utilizing my two devices here, my Groove Epic Learning Center, more on that in a minute, and the Groove Rio Learning Center. I'll use these tools to demonstrate these capabilities. Then second, I'm actually going to switch over to the live demo that you probably got a glimpse of early on in this presentation. Um, and this is a wind turbine application. So what I'm doing here is actually pattern off of a real application and incorporates even more of the technologies I've described. So that'll be closer to the top of the hour, um, uh, but you don't want to miss that. Okay, so we're going to switch back over to here. And I'm going to bring up my browser. Great, here we go. All right, let's settle in. Okay, so you should see on your video now, um, uh, let's see, make sure you can see my screens. Looks like you can. Great. Okay, down here on the lower part of the screen here, you see my, uh, you know what, let's switch this around. Let's get a closer look at this guy. So uh, I've got my Groove Learning Center here, uh, Groove Epic Learning Center. It comes on this nice blue acrylic here. I've got a little load panel with some push buttons, a knob, a temperature, and all of this I.O. This is also available on our website for purchase today. Uh, ben, will you drop a link in for that? And as you can see here, I've got uh, all my uh, I.O. wired up to my I.O. modules 
this here on my removable cage clamp terminal connector. Uh, I've got my nice dead front uh, covers that come down. Then I've got some nice visualization here that's uh, showing me which uh, I.O. modules are firing or which inputs are on, so those are very helpful. Uh, I've got some nice blue LEDs here across the top that when they're this nice shade of blue, everything is cool. So everything is uh, working as properly, but they change colors based on their, mo uh, on their modes. Now the other thing I have on here, of course, is that smartphone size display touchscreen display right on the face of the Epic that allows me to, of course, configure uh, this system. Everything is there. This is all right here on the, on the face of the uh, controller. And then I've got some other features like, for example, I can move my finger, touch the actual I.O. module itself. It'll wake up the display and show me all the data from that I.O. card. So in this case, I can see which inputs may be coming on and the light blinks indicating that's the module I'm looking at. Let's go check out the output module. Same thing here, I can see what outputs are firing. I can even toggle those outputs, force those outputs on and off as, uh, as well. And this might be important for say, a, a somebody who's building a panel with Epic inside. They'll land all their uh, uh, IO and terminations, then right from the face of the device, they can test all those outputs, they can commission the system, all without ever getting it on a network or opening up a PC or a laptop. They can do everything right from the screen. So a lot of features and capabilities there. In fact, I could probably do my whole demo uh, right, from this, uh, right from the Epic itself, uh, but it's a lot easier to do it from the browser. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm gonna switch my screen. There's my browser. We'll keep the Epic Learning Center right there in the corner so you can see how this works. First things first, let me, uh, I've got a list here to make sure, because it's so easy to get down a uh, rabbit hole. So I got a list to keep me on track. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log into the uh, Epic Learning Center uh, and it's called Epic LC Demo Studio. More on that in a minute. And then I'm going to log in. This is important. I have to log into the system. Whether it's on the face of the device or from a network connection, it has an account and I must log in. More importantly, there is no default username account. So if you think you're going to run out to the internet and say, what's the default user pass for, uh, for Epics and Rios? You won't find an answer because there isn't one. We ship these with no accounts on them. You must create that first account. I'm going to go into accounts now and I'm going to click on users. Now that first account is a local account. That's designed to get the system up and running. Uh, once that's up and running, you can start doing some pretty impressive and uh, exciting things. For example, you probably noted I logged in as B. Hoagland uh, into this system. Um, and indeed, B. Hoagland is not a local user account on this Epic. It's on the IT system from Windows Active Directory. So indeed, we've uh, put uh, LDAP in here so we can now manage users for your PLCs from a central location. Who does that? Well, we do. That's the whole point. That's the edge computing. So. LDAP is, uh, is built in as well. Imagine a rogue employee leaving or something and having to go to every PLC to, to take the accounts out. Nope, all centrally managed now. Okay, I gotta keep moving here. We got a lot to cover. I'm gonna go to security now because security of course is so important. What we see here are different tools for managing security certificates. These are important. If you've ever tried to manage security on a Windows server before, it's a nightmare. We've made it really easy with these tools. Ability to generate uh, server certificates, uh, CSRs and so on, and install them in here. So what do these certificates do? Well, once you have a certificate and it's signed by a you know, certifying authority, then I'll install it on the Epic. And the reason for that is so when a client, like my browser right here, is connected to that Epic, we're doing so securely. We know the server, we know something about the server, we know that we've created an encrypted connection to avoid man in the middle attacks. So indeed, I'm connected securely to my Epic uh, from a server cert. But the inverse is also true. There are gonna be times, and I have demos of this, where Epic is a client, in which case it's gonna go actually go log on to another server, say a database server, uh, an MQTT broker, whatever, uh, and it needs a client cert to know that it's connecting securely to that outside server. That's built in as well, uh, and managing that is quite easy. But here's one that's uh, really awesome. We have a fully functional 
firewall built in into the system. And this firewall covers it all. I mean, you can, you can be very, very granular about what ports on what interfaces are open at any time. In fact, frankly, you can, like an OEM application, you could close off all of the ports and only access the device through the user interface on the device. Still username and password. My point is that you can isolate this thing down to no access all the way up to very flexible configuration. And that access to the firewall is on the four different interfaces that are available on this. The two gigabit, uh, gigabit Ethernet ports, Wi-Fi, even VPN. So all of that is, uh, is built in here. So let's talk about some of those, uh, those uh, interfaces now. I'm going to switch over here to system and go up to network. And indeed, this is how it's done. This is how it gets on the network. Uh, in this case, the Epics and the Rios are by default able to go and retrieve or get an IP address dynamically from your uh, IT system, whether, you know, even in your home, you've got a router and it has DHCP and DNS services. Same idea here. Remember, we're still secure and we're going to get an IP address and then I can give it a host name. So it comes with a default host name that's actually on the label on the inside of the uh, Epics cover, but that's a, I wanted to put something I could actually remember. So Epic LC Demo Studio, nice full name there. And of course, that's how I go to the browser to get to the device. So I've got a DHCP address from the IT network. No worries. If you want to do this with a static IP address, you can do that. Just go in there and configure static IP. I have an example of static IP set up over on my back device. But here's something that's important. Not only did I get a dynamic address, so I'm on the network, I also got a, a configured gateway. What's a gateway? A gateway is essentially your router or a computer that's designed to route traffic that's des destined for another network. So if I'm just on a 10192 network and moving data around, I'll never hit the gateway. But if I say I want to go to google.com or a weather API or the broker, I'm going to need a gateway to get to the internet. Uh, this is very, very common. This is how your PC and your on your company LAN or even at home and how you're joining this meeting today, you are routing that traffic out through the gateway to get to the internet. But that doesn't mean you have opened yourself up to the internet. You're creating a connection outbound. You can't get back in. There's firewalls in place and your router There's on the, on the gateway and of course on the Epic. So this is a completely secure way of uh, creating these connections. Got a couple, several other connections in here. Well, I'll talk about those when we get over to the live demo because that's a pretty heavily configured device there where this one's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, I've covered uh, system configuration. There's some other stuff in there. There's a time client. There's display options. I'll talk about display options when I get over to the other side. Serial connectivity. We've got serial cards here. I even have a, uh, a little USB to serial converter. Uh, USB to serial converter for talking to devices if I want. Uh, either one that are configured right from here, uh, which is nice. And I have Shell. So Shell is something I spoke of a moment ago where we actually have a way for you to get in there and write your own applications and uh, run them right on our platform. So that does require a special account and a license. It's free, no problem. Just give us a ring, we'll get you a Shell license. Okay, gotta move on. Lots to cover still. <laughs> Controllers. Hey, at the end of the day, this thing is a PLC. It's got I.O. It's got a real-time control engine. But here's one thing you probably uh, probably knew to you. You actually have a choice of what kind of programming language you want to program your real-time control strategy, whether that's CodeSys, where you can develop in an IEC 611.31 uh, compliant uh, environment, do a ladder, uh, ladder diagram or function block or structured text, your choice. Um, or our own pack control. In this case, I am running pack control. So if I log in there uh, or click through, I can see that the pack control real-time engine is running. It's running a control program at this moment. In fact, it looks like it's running uh, three charts down here. So what does that mean? Well, there's probably a lot of you that uh, are new to Opto, and that means you're probably new to our control language. It's called pack control. 
It's been around for 30 years. We've been, there's thousands of applications all over the world that use this programming language. That said, you still have a choice to use the IEC 61131 method. But real quickly, uh, you break your application down into manageable chunks that are run in flowcharts with action blocks and condition blocks. And we even have you know scripting in there, like a visual basic type scripting for developing your application. And then, of course, your application is designed with uh, charts, with variables, with I.O. So you can see there I've got local I.O. here configured, even PIDs. We're super good at PID loop controls. That's all built in as well. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, Rio is, can be remote I.O. To, a, to an Epic. And in this case, I indeed have another device behind me uh, that's configured as remote I.O. So lots of other stuff in this pack control language. I, I uh, urge you to check out our free training, OptoU. There's a terrific new set of courses on pack control. Learn everything you want to know uh, about pack control. Okay, moving on. We've talked about controllers. Um, now the next thing to talk about is the HMI. So we're going to go into Groove View, click, and here it is. So as you can see, it's a nice visual web-based, I'm in the browser, web-based interface. This is making, again, a secure connection to the Epic, and all of these pages and all of this application is resident in the edge. So here I can go and navigate between various uh, pages that I may have created. I'll come over here to the uh, appliances. As you can see, I can have trends, I can have gadgets. I've got all kinds of uh, cool capabilities here. Let me go into menu because the development environment for uh, this GrooveView uh, software is in the device. So I'm going to switch to build mode and here we are. I've got uh, all my different devices I can connect to, OPC UA servers, local I.O., and so on and so forth. Uh, all that's in there. I've got a lot of pre-made gadgets that I just drag out onto my canvas and lay them out on my screen and build pages and so on. But I've got one other kind of cool feature. I told you this will work on your mobile device. Well, in some applications will try to, you know, flow your data screens based on whether you're looking at the mobile device or not. But indeed, what we do is we give you an option to do that on your own. So here's an example of a screen. In this case, uh, I think I'm on the appliance screen. Uh, let's get a look at how that works. So I'm going to switch over to here. And whoa, the emails are coming in. I'm going to go to my Groove View application, which is a free application available on our website, uh, on the uh, iOS store or Android store. I'm going to connect, oh, not to my, uh, yeah, there we go. And I'm going to go to Appliances. And there you go. Now I've got a local operator interface. Uh, and if I switch over here on my, um, and I'll switch back my screens in a moment, I've got my local interface on my mobile device. And if I switch back, you can see the desktop version there. So got you covered. Whatever you want to use as your HMI, uh, we've got you covered there. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you here is the weather. And check this out. Right now, I'm looking at the weather. It's actually 58 degrees outside, rather sunny, uh, so it's nice. I've got the forecast. And all. all this weather data is in the Epic. How'd that happen? Well, as I said, Epic has this client capability to go reach out to an API, to a server, and get data. In this case, we're, we're going to go get it from uh, Dark Sky, uh, which is just a, uh, a, weather, uh, a weather site. But how did I get it into the Epic? Well, that leads us to the next piece of software, the Node-RED software. Here I can see what the Node-RED's running, how much CPU it's using. But here I just want to jump right in and take a look at the flows. Uh, uh, Node-RED is a, a software, open source software, developed by IBM for connecting different things together. For example, going to an API and getting weather data, going to a database and putting data in a database or pulling data out of a database. All of those are represented in these relatively simple flows. So this one here, I'm every three hours going to the Dark Sky web server securely, pulling the data back and putting it into the Epic so that any application on the Epic can use that data for whatever we need. Right now, I'm using it to you know, display it in the GrooveView uh, screens. There's some other flows in here that, just as I described, one that's moving data to a SQL database, another one that is grabbing data from a SQL database. More on Node-RED coming up. Uh, so quickly, I got to go from the next one. I talked about MQTT. 
Uh, this is it. This is MQTT here. Pretty straightforward. Fill in the blanks. So here I'm going to choose my MQTT payload. Uh, we suggest using spark plug, uh, spark plug payloads for industrial applications, but certainly you could have just regular string payloads if that's, uh, if that's your thing. You put in your topic namespace, which kind of data you want to get. In this case, this built-in native MQTT client will publish data from the control strategy or from the I.O. Uh, directly. And then you go to the broker and you configure where a broker is. So what does this look like? Well, I'm going to take you back over to my demo screen. I'm going to page down to this screen here. And you may recognize this from the slides. I'm configuring the Epic right here. And I'm, connect I'm uh, grabbing all the data that I want uh, to post to the MQTT broker. I'll then make a, a secure connection up to this broker. Now, quickly about the broker. It's just software. It's software running on a server or a PC, or you even can get brokers to run on Raspberry Pis. Uh, MQTT is open source, so I can get a free open source uh, MQTT broker called Mosquito. Or I can choose to go with a commercial solution, like what we've selected here, the Chariot Broker from our friends at Cirrus Link Solutions, who, by the way, are the co-inventors of MQTT in the first place, dating all the way back to 1999. So those guys really know their stuff. And another, another option, of course, is cloud. Uh, you can go with a cloud broker like uh, HiveMQ. We work with those guys as well. They have millions of uh, MQTT clients uh, going through their broker configurations. So lots of choices is the bottom line. Once I get the data into the broker, then I can have other applications subscribe to that data and do something with it. So you can see I've decoupled the uh, data producing devices from the data consuming devices up at the top. All right, so let's, uh, let's switch back, uh, configure where that broker is, the username, password, secure connection, select my certs, I'm all set, I click save, and suddenly, this device, the Epic, is publishing data on change securely. And when it made that connection to the broker, it persists. And that simply means it keeps the connection live so I can actually get data to come flow back. So now it's bi-directional. Another key consideration. This stuff's so cool. So I got <laughs> I gotta wrap it up here. Um, ignition, and I'm just on the, on the Epic. That's okay. We're okay. Um, this is Ignition. This is Ignition software that's pre-installed on the Epic. Uh, in this case, for the Learning Center, I'm not using Ignition. I am in the uh, demo coming up. Uh, but here it is. I choose uh, which platform or which edition of uh, Ignition I choose to use. Uh, select that. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why you purchase the license for that based on your needs, based on which uh, platform you select and which modules you need. Uh, and then once that's up, you're up and running. Uh, Ignition's working there. More on that in a minute. Ooh, I've covered a lot of ground here uh, just on Epic. And as you would expect, you guys are going to have questions, you're going to need help, and so on. Aside from the aforementioned methods to receive help, we've also got help built in. So very quickly, I can see my system status, including how much disk drive space I have left available for local data storage, file uh, data logging, and so on. I've got uh, all the logs for all the software applications that are running on here for troubleshooting. I've got uh, my documentation here for, uh, you know, um, the user's guide, the uh, uh, data sheets from all the modules, everything is right on the device. So even if I didn't have a connection to the internet, uh, I can get all the data. We also have a full REST API. Uh, so here's an, you know, if you're a developer and you want to create an application that goes and gets data from the Epic, again, Epic being a server in this case, a fully documented REST API that's all done through a Swagger document so you can actually test the calls. You can see all this is built in. It's a developer's dream. So uh, we'll come back to that uh, on, another, uh, on another webinar. Uh, so that, in a nutshell, is uh, all about uh, the Groove Epic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch gears over to the Groove Rio. This won't take long because I think you'll find here that it's very, very similar. So I'm going to go into Rio, and I'm going to go into this learning center. This learning center is not quite available yet. Look for this availability in April. Please subscribe to our blog uh, so you'll get updates about when the, when the Rio is available. Okay, so once again, 
I've got to log in, right? So I click and I am using my IT credentials to log in uh, even for the Rio. So it's going out to that LDAP server, confirming that I'm authenticated. And here we go. And just as I said, this is Epic, switch tabs, that's Rio, pretty similar. The big difference, of course, is the IO channels at the top. I'll get to that. So the accounts is, this, is very similar, security is very similar, system, again, pretty similar. The difference is you only have one network interface on this, two ports, but they're switched, so one IP address, but we still support VPN and Wi-Fi, including the USB configurations for that. Let me just drop in there really quick. I do have USB enabled, and let me uh, just give you a closer look here. You can see there I've got actually a little USB key, a little data, uh, data key uh, in there. I think it's like two or four gigabytes in size. And that, of course, I could use for data logging. I can, I can actually, from within this interface, I can actually view all the files on that USB card. So I can move files, for example, if I go into images and say this, uh, this image here, I can open the file, I can download it to my local PC, I can move it, I can cut, I can do anything. So I can do all this programmatically as well. I'm just showing you the, the manual interface. Um, so I can upload files, I can do all kinds of stuff with the USB. But I also have local storage on the device. So if I go here into my secured files, now I am on the Rio, look at this, I've got a couple of CSV files. So indeed, I am data logging local I.O. information, same kind of thing, I got you know, temperature, push buttons, and so on. I'm logging data to the local storage on the Rio. How? Let's show you. I'm gonna go back to the home page. So I'll just come up here and click home. And Node Red. Node Red is running on the Rio as well. Open the Node Red editor. Now I've gotten a little crazy with my Rio here. So there's a lot of different uh, flows here. I'm just going to show you a couple of quick ones. I told you that Rio is not a real time control engine, and it's not. It doesn't run CodeSys or Pack Control. But I can do some so called non real time logic. For example, here I'm reading a temperature. And if the temperature gets above 80 degrees, as is noted in this little uh, node here, it'll turn on or off a relay. So right down here, we've got, uh, let me switch my, uh, my screen for you. Right down here, I've got this relay number nine. And if I put the temperature sensor in my, uh, believe me, very sweaty palm right now, <laughs> it's gonna heat up that, uh, uh, that temperature sensor and we should see that uh, little relay at number nine uh, pop on. It may take just a second. Uh, so when it does, uh, we'll see that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back and show you some of the other logging on here. Uh, right here, I've got a data logger. So this is how I'm getting that temperature onto that local CSV file, right resident on the device that I can move anywhere. I can move it out to another server. I can come and get it. Uh, pretty simple flows there. I even got an email alert and texting built right in. So if I push this top button right here, I'll go ahead and do it right now. I'm gonna push the top button on the screen. You say you can see it's sending an email and yep, I just connected to the Gmail servers and to sent my email. Uh, and as I always say, uh, trust but verify. So <laughs> here's my email. Uh, there indeed, top button on the demo was triggered at March 16th at 11.49. Ooh, I'm a little bit behind. Okay, so there, uh, there's your email. You can do texting and so on. So the distinction again, Rio and, uh, and, and Epic, Rio is not a real-time control engine. I just describe that. Rio also doesn't have GrooveView. GrooveView does run on the Epic, but not on Rio. However, Node Red to the rescue. They have something called the UI dashboard. So in this case here, I can actually read my uh, temperature, read a counter, and display it to a, uh, to a literally a built-in dashboard that's still web-based. I'm going to log into it now and bring it up here and look at, there it is. So when I was holding with my sweaty palm, uh, you can see the temperature go up there on my little trend and it came down. I didn't quite get to 80. I should have left my hand on there longer. Uh, but there it is, 76 degrees is what that is now. I can hold it again. Uh, I can also go here and turn on or off the relay. So number eight relay is on right now. Let's get a closer look. And if I click on turn off that relay, you'll see the light go off, turn it on. Yep, works just like, uh, just like it's supposed to. 
and then I've got even here a counter. So how did I get all this I.O. into Node Red? Well, that's where we get to the I.O. configuration, and uh, we'll go back to the I.O. page, and here it is. All of my I.O. that's configured, software configured, is right here on this screen. So I've got my buttons, my gauges. I'm going to go into the bottom button here. I'm going to click Configure, and here it is. This is where I give the I.O. point a name, and it becomes that single source of truth, particularly if I'm using MQTT, REST APIs, or whatnot. And then this is where, uh, again, the magic happens. Lots of magic. Uh, this is how I choose what signal it is. So for channel one, I have all of these choices, software configurable, and land uh, that uh, termination right to the top of the Rio, and is now a switch input, power digital input. It's just a dry contact. We're actually providing the voltage for that. But we'll go one step further, the counter. Yes, on channels zero and one, we can take plain old simple digital inputs, you know, whether something's on or off or not, and put some features to it. In this case, I am making it a counter. So every time I press that button, I will count it and store that information locally, plus all the other cool things I did, like log it to a disk and uh, send an email. All that stuff is done all by Rio by itself. Um, and then finally, um, this public access. This is where I define what data points I want sent up to MQTT to be consumed by other applications, cloud apps, uh, database apps, whatever. And I can publish that uh, right here. So the same, same concepts that we've had before. Uh, you've got uh, MQTT set up here and so on. Finally, uh, two, two more quick things here, PID loops. Yep, Rio will do PID, closed loop control. So there's another little control thing that we can do, and that actually is, uh, works very well. Here's an example where I have a, a PID loop where I'm taking a temperature, my temperature in, and then I've got a little resistor in there that's heating up the element, and so I can keep track and tune my loop right from this screen. So if I go and change that to say, let's make it 85, Obviously, we're going to see the control output. My text, my set point goes up. My control output goes up to eliminate the error. Try to reach set point. Four PID loops built in to the system on the Rio. Wow, lots, uh, lots of stuff there. Um, yeah, and the other thing that's kind of cool is like, okay, I got all this I/O. I got uh, all these things I want to do. How do I wire up the I/O? Both Epic and Rio offer I/O references. And indeed, I can see all the specs for any given module, and I can even see the wiring diagrams. We've included that as well. So we're really trying to uh, provide a lot of help and guidance for uh, helping you get started with these systems. Okay, finally, 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 on Rio. IO config. We get this question too. Oh, wow, Benson, hey, man, that thing's it's got a lot of stuff on it. It can do a lot of things, Node Red, NQTT, but I just need Modbus. Can you do that? Yeah, just check the box, and Modbus is there. We even put in a calculator in there, so every data point I just described is accessible by a Modbus unit ID and a register. So we got you covered. You want to do it the old way, uh, we will support that as well. All right. It is literally almost the top of the hour, and as I warned early on this webinar, uh, there's just no way to fit it all into an hour. Um, so uh, rest assured, as I said, we are recording this. If you have to bounce off at the top of the hour, no worries. You're not going to miss anything. We're going to send you a link, and you're going to, you know, if, if you have to get off, you can watch the uh, rest of it later and see the next portion of the demo. The next portion of the demo is my wind turbine demo. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. And we're going to start by uh, first getting to my list. And I'm going to switch over to my PPT host right here, my PowerPoint. And I'm going to actually page up because I want to kind of describe how the pieces are fitting together, what's running where, and what this application actually does. Okay, buckle up. Here we go. First things first, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, let me just show you quickly the video. Here it all is. I'm going to be pointing these things out on this architecture diagram here. First and foremost is the Groove Epic, the edge in your automation projects. Right there, we've got a number of pieces of software running on it. First things first, we have pack control running on this too, the flowchart real-time engine. It's connected to various devices, 
and those are going to be indicated here. So I've got a turbine, a little model turbine that we're actually going to start and stop. And hold on, because you're going to be able to do it too. Uh, I've got a, a stack light here. And the way that this works is I've actually got other software, Node-RED, running here as well, that is making a decision. Node-RED and the Pack Control is making decisions on when to turn these things on based on external information. What does that mean? I'll get to it in the HMI portion, but we'll actually start and stop the turbine based on the real-time electrical price for electricity. Really cool. The second one over here, the stack light, that's a stock I'm trading. Uh, uh, well, I'm not really trading it anymore, but that's a stock we're tracking. Green means the stock is up, which is good. More on that in a moment. The other thing you'll see on this diagram are two PLCs. You may uh, recognize the brands. Um, I think there's a few people that use them. Uh, I'm not sure how long anymore, but that not being and that notwithstanding, here they are, uh, the legacy unsecure PLCs. Now I don't want to put these on my corporate LAN because then anybody can access them because they're unsecure. So what we're doing is we're putting them on this blue cable over that segmented in, uh, Ethernet interface on a private network segment. There's no chance for any PC in this building to get to those PLCs uh, the way the system is configured at the moment. So that's the, uh, what we're calling here the OT network. So we've completely secured those P PLCs. But yet, with other software on the device, including Ignition Edge and Groove View, we're actually able to take all the data from the PLCs, take the data from the local control strategy, and take all of that and move it out to a local OIT, or in this case, just an uh, HDMI monitor with a touch screen, move it all out to there, and of course, move all that data through the yellow cable here, which is connected to the corporate LAN with a gateway to the internet so we can publish it out to MQTT. The other thing you'll see on my uh, screen here is I've got another a Rio over here on the corner. It's connected to a little Modbus meter. More on that later. All right. I'm going to focus right now on everything that's happening at the local area. So this is like if we were on site at the turbine, edge computing at play here, communicating to PLCs and so on. So I'm now going to switch over to this screen and bring open my, um, let's see if I can bring open my, there we go. And I'm going to, first things first, I'm going to log into that particular Epic, the one that we have behind me. So I'm going to go into a new browser tab. I'm going to select that Epic. This one is much more configured than my Learning Center Epic. So, and, and real quickly, all that software I showed you on the Learning Center, all those files are available for you. So all those screens, all that strategy, everything that I did there, you can download a file from our website and actually put it on your own Learning Center and not have to do everything from scratch. This presentation, that I'm, this demo I'm about to show you, I did that all that over many years of, uh, of, of practice and getting things right. So, okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop open, let's see, let's go to uh, here. I'm gonna log in. This case, I am gonna use the local uh, user account. Don't have to go through all of this because most of this is all set up. But one thing I wanna show is a couple of the distinctive things uh, relative to this, uh, present um, this demo. First, is the networking. Here's the networking configuration for, let's see, right down there. <laughs> so the yellow cable is connected to my IT network and has dynamically been assigned this IP address and indeed has this gateway to the internet. My Ethernet 1, the blue cable down there to the PLCs is on a private non-routable network, completely protected from everything else. Fantastic. Then if I'm not on the local LAN, and certainly not on the PLC land, but maybe I'm somewhere else in the world. I mean, we're in COVID, right? So you might be working from home. That's why I have a VPN tunnel also started up here automatically. So when this guy powers up, it will automatically connect to a VPN server so I can gain access directly to my system. So that's some of the network settings that are, uh, that are set up here on, uh, on this device. I do have a pack control program running as, as well. Um, and then the display. Here's the display settings. As I mentioned earlier, I can set the orientation, I can set the video mode, whether it's, you know, what, what resolution it is, and even do zooming and calibration all from that, uh, from this screen here. So that's basically setting up this, uh, this HDMI monitor here. All set, good. Now we're gonna take a look at the local HMI, 
which is Groove View here. And we're going to take a look at some of the screens. Now these are screens that are again coming right out of this Epic. So this is still an HMI server. And I have you know various number of things I can do control and whatnot. Let's talk about the turbine application. The way that the wind turbine application works is we only want to run the turbine when we can make money. And the only way we'll know if we're going to make money or not is we need to know what the what the um, the price is that they're paying for electricity. Well, right now it's actually up pretty high. It's forty one ninety nine. This data I got from a different server, CalISO, through the node red that's running on this device. So indeed, I can run it in auto mode, or I can just simply turn it on. So there you go. I'm turning it on. But something you might notice is that the screen I have on my browser is different than the screen that's on the HDMI. And that's, that's for a reason. The local user is logged in here, and that's what's being shown on that screen because it's almost like ha hanging a monitor off your PC. Whereas this screen, this blue one that's on the browser now, is my remote user logged in. So that's why I'm seeing two different things. No worries, we're going to turn off the turbine there for a moment. Uh, I got the weather data here. This is the weather data on the browser and in the inset there. That's the weather data on the monitor. So they're the same screens, uh, just uh, different users. Okay, so that's uh, a couple of the HMI screens that I have in here. One other one I'm going to show you is AB and Siemens. And yes, I'm actually able to bring in my, uh, uh, my Allen Bradley data and my Siemens data into the local HMI. Uh, watch your screen again on the bottom. I click that. I just turned off the red stack light and turning off the green stack light. So from my HMI, I'm communicating to the PLCs as well. How? How am I doing that? One of the most powerful pieces of software we offer on the Groove Epic is something called Ignition Edge. So let's take a very quick look at uh, Ignition Edge. It's very comprehensive software, so I'm not going to even do it justice in this uh, short period of time I have. So I'll show you what I can. I am running it. It's version 8.11, and it is the Ignition Edge edition, not full Ignition. Uh, we sell a license for this. It has all the drivers, all the MQTT. Everything I'm going to show you is part of the license that Opto sells. Uh, right from, uh, it's the only license we sell for Ignition is, is that particular one. Here I am. I'm logged into the gateway portion of the Ignition Edge instance running at the edge. So once again, I'm going to log in and I'll click continue. I'm just going to log in with my user pass. I'm going to go straight to config. Again, we'll do another webinar just on uh, the integration of Ignition uh, with the Epic and Rio. And we have some actually on the YouTube now. Uh, and two things I want to focus on here very quickly. One, connecting to the PLCs, because inside Ignition Edge are a number of drivers that allow us to con connect to PLCs. So we're going to talk about that first. So I'm going to go to Device Connections. Here we go. And look at this. There's my, I got my AB PLC, my Siemens PLC. And Ignition is even talking to the local control program, my PAC control program there. I'm going to click on Edit. And the reason for this is to show you how it's configured. And it's super simple. I give it a, a name, ABPLC, uh, and its uh, IP address or host name. Well, unfortunately, the Allen Bradley stuff doesn't work by host name, so I have to give it an IP address. But note that it is a 172 address, which uh, if I go back to here, you can see that that is the address of my network right there. So it's uh, that one's uh, .50. So we'll swing back, switch my screens, and that's it. Now the other cool thing about the driver and ignition is it will go to the PLC once this is configured and I hit save and pull all the tags for me. So I don't have to re-enter any of those tags. I can publish all those PLC tags directly to uh, the MQTT broker. So very, very simple how to do that. There's lots of drivers in here. Like I said, uh, Modbus, uh, Siemens, Omron, DNP, Flow Computers. Oh, it's, it's super stacked. So let's go down here to uh, the second thing I wanted to show you. Now, up until this point, I've been using the Groove Manage MQTT client and configuring that to send data. Works great for pack control tags and I.O. tags. In other words, stuff that's you know, largely tied to the, to the Opto system. But if I want to get other data, 
from the PLCs or I want to get data from, I have other records or something like that, I will use this client. So in essence, the Epic has two MQTT, MQTT clients. I'll call this one the super client. <laughs> this one is also developed by, Induct, uh, by Cirrus Link Solutions. It is a module that fits into the Ignition platform. And once again, I can just go over here to servers. There's the address, there's the username and pass. I'm connected securely, super simple. But one thing that this uh, MQTT transmission client has that's different than the built-in native client is I have the ability to move records. Now this is of particular importance to the oil and gas market uh, and one of the reasons it was created. There is records here, so if we're connected to a flow computer, we can pull all the flow computer records, immutable records, and get those where they need to be. Or pump off card information from say a pump jack. That can be pulled off and sent over MQTT. But what's more is the brand new feature is files. So with this MQTT client, I can literally take any file that's resident on my Edge device on this Epic and move those regular files over MQTT as well, in addition to IO variables and so on. So there you go. That's how the Ignition stuff works. And that's how I was able to get it on my local HMI display here. So. We're going to move on. Uh, last part of the demo is what does it look like on the other end? What does it look like from a SCADA host or from your web browser that anybody can connect to securely and with high performance? I'm going to switch back to this screen here. Here we are. I've talked about the OT network, the IT network connecting to the cloud, to the broker. Now I'm going to log into this computer here. Uh, it's a uh, just a Windows VM. It's at the address demo.groove.com. It's running the Ignition, another instance of Ignition software with the MQTT engine module, which it goes in and pulls all the tags it's authorized to see uh, into the system, serves them up as OPC UA, and then I have an OPC UA client called Groove Server for Windows. It's the same Groove software we embed into the uh, Epics, but we also have a version that runs on Windows. So as a way of demonstrating that I'm able to take all of this MQTT data and present it as OPC UA into a client, that's what we're going to do here. And then at the end, I'm actually going to show you another client that is connected to the broker itself called Canary. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, switch over, switch back to my browser, and I'm going to just, I'm going to jump right in here. I'm going to go from demo.groove right to the home page. This is a public website that you do have to log into. Um, and this is, uh, I need to log in. I'm going to log in as a developer. This is available to anyone. You can go in your browser and type demo.groove.com now. And you'll uh, once you log in, you'll see this. I'm going to jump right down to Opto Turbine Epic. And look at this. I'm on a separate PC on a local computer that's connected to the internet. And now I have this dashboard of all the data that's on this demo here. I have even got a little live video. It's not super fast. It's like two second refresh, but I've, I've got all the data. Now the, the Cal ISO price is at $39. Um, and I've got my game stock stock there. I can see what it's doing and uh, it's red. So that means the stock's down. Uh, I digress. Okay, performance. Everything I've showed you is about security, about moving data where it needs to be, about uh, providing a, a level of functionality, versatility, and capabilities you've never seen before. But here's the, here's the real deal. If it ain't fast, you're not going to use it. So let's demonstrate the performance of this system. Here's what I'm going to do. I've got my turbine control button right here. I've also got a button for Siemens and AB. Now I'm going to click on this screen, which is on that other server on the internet, click on that screen and real quickly, I'm going to, when I click on that screen, I'm going to send the data to the ignition gateway. It's going to take that OPC request, turn it into an MQTT request, publish it to the broker. The Epic on the other side, right here behind me, is going to subscribe to that change. And if it's the turbine, it'll send it to the local control program and turn on the turbine. If it's an Allen Bradley or Siemens, it's going to go and turn one of those stack lights on. Now, remember, we're going through a number of different servers. We're going through the cloud. It's, it's making quite a route to get where it needs to be. And it's 100% secure and encrypted. So it can't be fast, right? Oh, I love that challenge. Here we go. I'm going to click on this button. 
just as I described. Three, two, one. Watch the lower video here. That's in real time. Sub-second response. It is absolutely astonishing, even for me still today, how fast that operates. Here's another one. That was just talking to the local control program. Talking to the Allen Bradley and Siemens, that's got to take quite a bit longer, right? It's on a completely different network. It's secure, all this stuff. Nope. Three, two, one. Watch the screen beneath us. It's on. That's the green stack light to the PLC, uh, the Siemens PLC. Let's see how AB stacks up. Just as fast as the rest. So there you go. The performance of this system is remarkable. The security is all there. You're, once you get the data into the broker, you can have applications like this OPC client, or maybe you have a favorite OPC client and dare I say some other SCADA system uh, that talks OPC. You can absolutely use everything I've just showed you, even with those legacy software applications. But I got to warn you, once you get your eye on Ignition and the other modules that are available, uh, you, you'll probably take a closer look at that. But Ignition is a modular platform, so we're just using it to do all the MQTT, which is uh, fantastic. Finally, uh, I'm going to drop a link in for you. Uh, we're going to drop in a link and a QR code. So if you have your phone with you, I told you at the beginning of the event, go ahead and uh, shine your camera up there. It will load up this page for you in your browser on your phone or choose to use the link and run this from your browser and have a ball. <laughs> and while you guys are doing that, uh, you can turn on and off the stack light, you can turn on and off the turbine and so on. Uh, while you're doing that, I'm actually going to, there you go, thank you for playing. <laughs> and we've got uh, quite a few of them on the call here. We're, and there is a lot of people, so there's going to be quite a few people that are going to be walking over each other uh, to, to operate the uh, turbine and operate these lights. Don't forget the stack lights. You can click those too. Okay, last thing, uh, and then we'll wrap this thing up. I told you that in this uh, configuration that you can have lots of different clients connect. Canary has done uh, a remarkable thing. They've created a interface from their historian directly to the MQTT broker. So when I come back to here, I'm going to actually, actually, you know what, I'm going to bring it up on the other browser because it's already logged in. Look at this. This is all the data into a historian, a Canary historian, and it, uh, it got all of this data from the MQTT broker. This historian has no idea what the IP address is of the control system it's getting. It, it literally is getting everything brokered. Again, this notion of applications being decoupled from the devices and using MQTT to broker that information. So I can see my game stock price, I can see the spot price of electricity on here and so on. But where it gets better is like an historian like this, there may be other data in that broker that, that you may want to historize. <laughs> and indeed, we do have a, more data. I have an Epic at my house. I'm sure that's not a surprise for those of you who know me, uh, but indeed I do. And I'm able to absolutely um, see all the data, my whole house energy, my pool energy, whether or not I'm running a uh, water research pump, this is my data. So, I, I mean, I can go back and look in the last seven days, for example. Let's go to, let's go to seven days and make that zero, zero and apply. And now I can see just how much energy and uh, everything right from all this data. His, this historian has no idea what the IP address is of my epic. I'm publishing into the broker. Canary is grabbing the data and so on. Uh, for those of you who still remain, uh, there's <laughs> quite a few of you. Uh, thanks for continuing to play around with the, uh, with the demo. Uh, here's those sneak peeks uh, that I promised. Uh, number one, the Rio that uh, we have down here running on, uh, on this device that I told you is communicating over the cellular network, it's a brand new Rio. It's a different part number, has more memory, has more RAM, but the most important part, it actually has Ignition 8 on it. So now we can run the Ignition 8 platform directly on a Rio communicate to other PLCs, other devices. In fact, the way that I am communicating to the SATEC power meter is over that, uh, over that connection. So if I go back into my, uh, my main screen here that I have now on the lower uh, left of your screen, click on Rio, right there my volts and my hertz are actually coming from that SATEC meter through Ignition 8 running on the Rio and getting the data where it needs to be. The second one, 
is over on the Epic side of the world, and this Epic is configured with this new feature. Let me show it to you. I'm going to come over here to, uh, let's see, yeah, this is Groove Manage for the Epic. And for uh, the keen eyes out there, you may have seen uh, something on my network settings. As you can see, on I've got my OpenVPN tunnel set up, uh, and that's on Tunnel Zero. If I come back to home, check this out, Port Forwarding. So now I have a way of actually creating a port forward tunnel to bring data on one interface and connect it over to another interface. So we've been asked this question quite a bit that we have this you know, secure features and capabilities to segment these networks and indeed that is exactly what it's designed to do. But on occasion you may want to you know, change that. You may want to open it up temporarily so that you could get to a given uh, port for it. Thank you, Ben. So we actually even uh, created a, a screen within the local interface that uh, allows you to do those port forwards, obviously with uh, extreme caution. Uh, so if I turn off the port forward there uh, through the Groove View interface, come back to Groove Manage, you can see it went disabled. And uh, if I refresh, my port forwards go away. So, in short, what we recommend is that you set up a VPN, allow the, uh, listen in on that tunnel, and use that. That way, all of everything is encrypted end to end to the other network. But indeed, we now have a feature uh, that we, uh, folks have been asked for, and we're excited to provide more on that in the coming months. Actually, this will be out in the next version, uh, 3.2 of Epic, uh, coming out uh, early next month as a matter of fact. So keep an eye on the blog post, make sure you're subscribed, and you'll get more information about that as well. And just to wrap things up here, you know, I covered a lot, and I appreciate you staying on as long as you did, and uh, for those of you who had to bail, I, I totally understand, my bad, um, but we've got a lot covered here. Check out our website, check out our training, drop us a line in the chat, tell us what you think. We're going to send you the video, but at the end of the day, there's all these pieces and parts that do a lot of different things. You may only need a few things. You may want to use them all. Either way, the reason we do this is to give you an edge in your automation projects, give you a platform to do whatever you can dream of. Your engineers, your developers, you need the right tools to do anything you want. Uh, we think we can do that with a Groove Epic. Thank you. And uh, we hope to see you next time on another video. We'll post this video also up on YouTube. Check out Ignition. Check out Node-RED. Check out all our partners. Uh, thanks again. Good luck on your projects.